Machine. Hi there, it's Claire here and welcome to Hot Pod Time Machine. This is the podcast where we talk about a decision from our past that changed our future. And I'm very happy to welcome on this episode, it's the wonderful Shy. Hi there. Hi Claire, how's it going? Hi. <laughs> Can we do the whole podcast like that? Just that like really this. Great. <laughs> yeah, like pretend looking at each other. <laughs> that wistfully, wistfully. Ah, oh, Shy, thank you so much. Ah, so. Nice. That's good TV. <laughs> that is good TV. Look at us already. Look, we're totally professional. I know. Totally yes. professional. Look at us. We work in the entertainment industry. God. I know. We know angles. We know where to look and stuff. Yes. Yeah. I mean, look, yeah, exactly. a great success already. We're, what, 20 seconds in? It's probably the best you've ever had, right? Well. <laughs> 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 no. Is that no, where I mean, we're going? You just, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just poked a dog, so I don't know what I'm thinking. You guys uh, will hear the dog episode after this one, and it's a, uh, it's a, it's a. I told Shy a little bit about it. All I'm yeah. gonna say is, I wrote at the end of it, and I'll show you my notes: snails and sphincters. <laughs> Which is weird because that's the name of my autobiography. So it's weird that that's what Doug talked about. I love Doug. I love Doug. Does too. Doug um play Twitch? It's, uh, it's, Wait, okay, here here we go. I'm going to edit myself as if it's not. <laughs> no, live. I like that you said play Does Twitch. That, <laughs> I know, play Switch, I meant. I was like, is he a Twitcher? But then... I no, he isn't. Him. He's not on Twitch. He's not so on Twitch. So he's not a Switcher. Streamer. But see, because Doug is the Witcher, Claire. Play with me. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean... Sorry, yeah, no, fine. Scene, scene. <laughs> hey, yeah, look, let's man. Restart. Look, Shy, I'm hot under these lights. I just did an hour and a half there with Doug. Yeah, no, I get it. Like, hey, dude, and now it. you're trying to work me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but at least now people watching this know the quality that's to come. Absolutely. Shambolic. Jokes, I love it. Of joke telling. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be shambolic and chaotic, and I'm, oh. I'm here for it. I'm here yeah. for it. Shambolic. Oh, okay, I get that one. I got that one that time. Oh, yeah, get that one. Write yes. that down. Get this time code for that. <clears throat> okay, hold on. Yeah. I'm actually going to write this down under snails and sphincters. Shy bollock. That. Shy bollock. Now, that is, is the title. <laughs> That's the title of your autobiography. Shy bollock. Yeah, shy bollock. Love it. Love it. Shy okay. Shy bollockal. Okay, tell me. Now, this is. I ask everybody yeah. this question when they, they first appear on the podcast. When I asked you to be on the podcast, and I, it's about decisions, it's really difficult, yeah. I know, because we make micro and macro decisions every single day. Like maybe we wear a different top, uh, maybe we don't take that phone call. It could be anything. So what? Don't tell me yet what you're going to talk about. What? But what kind of decisions came into your head? Like what were the random things that came into your head? Clear, clear, clear. I mean, as you know, I pretty much spiraled when you asked me to make a decision about a decision. Like if any one of my friends is watching this and our mutual friends, um, they know I cannot make decisions. I am the worst decision maker in the world. I agonize about every decision and I find decisions so hard. So to then pick into like, making decisions and this decisions that meant things and oh my god and then choosing a decision well choices more than decisions because i can make decisions it's the choices choices that i struggle with um but yeah choosing oof i think i didn't know what i wanted to talk about till literally an hour before this so i started agonizing about everything and it is really really stupid that i am talking about choices and decisions but here we are I love it. and then I went through the whole list of like like you said micro and macro and like I kind of wanted to talk about the big decisions like I think a lot of you guests have spoken about because they are the most important decisions of like going to drama school or moving to the UK or you know all those things and um I thought maybe that would be a cop-out for me for me because I can't make decisions and then I was like, oh, maybe decide about like I, when I was in third grade and I sort of consciously remember making a joke in class and then going, that's what I'm going to do from now. So like those things. Yes. Yes. Um, and they're important. And I chose. 
They are important. They're all important. They and they're because if I think about my decisions, when you were saying that there, I was thinking, yeah, when I decided to leave uni randomly after a year and go to London, that's a huge decision. Or yeah. my decision to apply for a visa to go tele. These are all huge life decisions. So yeah. it, it is hard. And also, I mean, I, I was actually, when you were saying that you, you find it hard to make decisions, I'm sorry to bring it into astrology this early, but are, are you a Libra? No. Yes? No? No. What star I'm, sign are I'm you? Cancer. Cancer. Oh, you're a Cancer. Does that mean? Oh. <laughs> I look you're like, Shh, what does that mean? Well, Cancerians, the they are quite private. Yeah. Cancerians, actually. Yeah. They're private people. Very private. But they're very, when they let people into the world, they're really warm. If you think about the crab, it's got the outer shell. The inside, the meat mm -hmm. is soft, you know? So it's like, you've got yeah. all this, like, lovely warmth and you know i think you probably like your home to be nice and you like like things around you to be comfy and but it doesn't mean you're not a doer because a cancer is a cardinal sign so which means it's like when you decide to take action you will go for it you will do yeah the thing. i i agree it's the decisions that are hard but once the decision is made i would go for it yes like i procrastinate a ton but once i decide to do something or once i've stopped procrastinating i go for it yes and when i do you know i i i need a deadline or i need i do things last minute often but then i fucking do them yes and that's um, a really good thing about yeah. cancer because there's they've got that lovely sensitive energy and mm. they're, they're very romantic and sweet and lovely friends and family are super important to them but they've got that mm, you know they can do stuff you know which is a, it's a really lovely thing there we go we figured you out that's it. Yeah, so. done. I don't know what we need to talk about now. Um, so <laughs> now we're going to go is, into... But like I also, you go into like multiverse... Hmm? Sorry if this is stupid. No, it's not I stupid. Mean, we said sphincters already. I mean, come on. Um, <laughs> you go into multiverse decisions. You go, well, did I like maybe the, the choice to, I don't know, uh, speak first in class led to this, which led to that, which inevitably led me to moved to the uk 20 years later which like you know like you go what the sliding doors of it all like what makes a decision yes i never decided to stay and live here but i did decide to move here at some point but was that decision but what led to it stay? yeah exactly it's like there's if you think about um i always think about you know and like i don't know if you like bill and ted you like bill and the movie bill and ted Oh, it's I okay. Remember. I think I've seen it when I was young. When they're traveling yeah, through time, it's, it, yeah. I'm not shaming you. I'll just talk just... and silently judge you. But <laughs> so the film, film Ted. Real and silent Ted. Yeah, go on, Ted. <laughs> it's when they're traveling through time, uh, there's all of these like little uh, lines and like little like, big fat cords of things. And that's how I find, that's what I think about decisions and time. It's like all of these things colliding into one yeah. another that affect the shape and the the color and the sound yeah. of things and that's how it feels because i agree it's like i'd say in the last year and a half the people i've met in this especially this last year and a half for me um and the new friends i've made i've really affected what i want to do with my life and how i feel and given me confidence to maybe go for things because they all work mm. in a certain industry and things whereas before i wasn't meeting so many people like that you know and and that's a nice thing. It's a good thing. So people affect you. You're totally right. You're totally right. Yeah. The choice to make friends, the choice to open up to other people leads you to whatever it leads you. You know, like I could come up with the reasons why we've met because of choices. We just met. Right. Yeah. But because I chose to befriend certain people that then took me to a place where I met you, that led to us knowing each other. So that decision, which I didn't put any emphasis on or impetus on um led me to it changed my future to being on this i know that you're here do you know what i mean yeah because it was so random i remember like meeting you i think it was the bafta drinks it was bafta yeah and i was probably drunk <laughs> and uh yeah, like you were just. We so, all were, so that's inevitable. Yeah, which was great. I remember like thinking yeah. you're so lovely and exuberant and chatty, and I think we were talking about the Back to the Future musical that we hadn't seen. Yes. Which yeah, yeah, and I was just like, God, and you know when you um, 
you know, I don't know if I meet people all the time, but I was saying this to Doug on the podcast, which will be coming next. Um, it's so lovely when you meet somebody and you go, you've got a good energy. I like this energy. Mm. And I don't that I don't say that very lightly about a lot of people, which is why I invited you on this podcast, because it's a podcast oh, for my friends. It's not like a, yeah. so shall I tell me about your work, shy? We're not doing that tonight. <laughs> no, 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 exactly. And it's funny, now I'm thinking about it. It is exactly that, back to the future. How fitting, because mm. it is that. Like, he goes back to the future, and if he drops the magazine and the bin then that changes the course of history but was that a decision was the decision you know what i mean like every little thing that we do i mean everyone watching this knows this i'm not saying anything new but like every little thing is a micro decision that can then lead to why we are where we are and i think my choice uh for today is kind of one of those things that's like a small thing that has consequence Oh, like okay, that? okay. I like that segue, but before we go into the segue, I mean, I loved it. And it's very, you know what? I could be a professional, but I go, I'm going to jump on that segue, but I'm not because this is my podcast. Yeah. Also, the last person that jumped on a segue. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to ask you a very important question, Shai. The most important question of your entire career, your life, in fact. Yeah. Talking about oh. to the future. If you and I were cast in the next Back to the Future movie or a prequel or something, who would yeah. be Doc and who would be Marty out of us two? I think, I don't know if you're expecting this, I think I'm going to have to be Doc. Okay. And you're going to have to be Marty. Oh, but can you do the voice? Because I think <gasps> you Yeah, I can try. Marty! 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 No. Yeah, that was uh, all right. It's better. Marty! Can you do a doc? Okay. Marty! <laughs> oh my god. Can you do a Marty? Doc! <laughs> <laughs> no one can do a Marty. How do you do a Marty? You gotta Unless talk. You go like, I don't know. No one can do a Marty. <laughs> I don't know. I started no. to talk no. like this. Like I'm a good, like I'm a good fellas. This could be the movie. <laughs> I think that's, <laughs> what's up doc? That's a different, that's a different doc. You going back to the fucking future or not? <laughs> yeah. yeah. What are you doing here? What are you doing in the future? Oh, wait, that's old Biff. Oh. That's old Biff. Oh, uh, punk. Oh, fuck. Yeah, this is us trying to do voices. Yeah, that, yeah and that's, no. You're... McFly! <laughs> yeah. That's young Biff. McFly! Uh, McFly! I can't do it. I can't do <laughs> it's it. It's good. McFly! <laughs> this is now the podcast hey, for the list. Yo, knucklehead! I could literally, I would prefer that we did this for the rest of the podcast. But we're going to now prefer. not use a segue, oh, just jump into. Because yeah. <laughs> that's that's yeah. time, man. Time doesn't have a construct. Mm. Time is no. meaningless, man. Mm. So, and mm. so is the structure the of this effect. podcast, <laughs> so clearly. Yes. And so is everything <laughs> I'm about to say. So. We're going to jump into that, but we will go back to the future, yeah. literally. So Yo. tell me, tell me, what do you want yes. to talk about? What is the decision from your past that changed your future? Um, Claire, I'm going to tell you about the decision from the past that changed my future. I, uh, it's kind of like, it's very sort of mid career. Um, I did this big, um, I auditioned for a really big game, like, a game that we all know and love. Um, at some point they were thinking about, well, I can't say too much because it'll be too obvious. But anyway, I, was, I auditioned for a really big game for the lead. I ended up not getting it, um, but then I got a little tiny part. Uh, not a tiny part, a smaller part than the lead. But Claire, I've never done a game in my life before that. And so we were talking about like triple A massive thing and here I come doing this game where essentially I had to talk like this the whole time. I can't do it today because my voice is not there. Um, anyway, I came and did the session and really fucked it. I was terrible. I was absolutely awful. And I think it was clear to everyone. Um, and I ended up being recast and that's attributed to other voices. And that was that. And that was my first game, my first experience. 
Um, and so I kind of licked my wounds after that. I didn't really do many game auditions after that. I think I maybe avoided them, but it might have been a mutual thing. We're talking a long time ago. Um, and then, but I really sort of befriended some of the people in the studio and everything. And so a couple of years later, I was like, okay, time to start the gaming career again. Um, and I approached one of the senior people in the studio because we just had a nice chat when I was there and said, uh, hey, I'm thinking of doing this again. I sort of had no that I think, like no thought that it's a bit weird to just approach someone and have them guide your career when they're not your friend. So I just said, hey, what do you think of uh, this? I've got some ideas for a new reel and what do you think I should do? And la, 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 la. God, this is a long preamble. No, um, go for it. No. And so this person was just so lovely on email and gave me such good feedback and such good um, advice and then ended up saying, oh, and how lucky, what good timing. We're also doing, I'm sort of just working on a list of our American voices and I can, uh, I'm, I'm going to add you to that. Da, 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 da. And sort of that started a chain reaction where I got back into consciousness within that studio, which is one of the bigger studios, um, outsourcing places. And within a year, I'd done my biggest part to then in a game or like within about a year, year and a half, I sort of did Dragon Quest, which is like a big part that I've done before. And I don't think it would have happened if I hadn't just sent that email, which I really agonized about because in this country, you're kind of not always expected to sort of go, help me. I know. Um, it's a weird attitude yeah, we've got right? here. It's not weird. Isn't it's just it weird? a mentality that's different from America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Yeah, yeah. And, and many other places. And I'm like, nah, fuck it. I just, I'm just going to go for it. And I don't always do that. I've, I've now been here so long that I am apologetic and shy about everything. Like that you're looking at me. Hey, Claire, how are you going? Hi, shy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you. Yeah. But anyway, I think that's my choice and that's my decision. I um, really like that, that email. Because like that email changed my life because from that point on, games have become, doing voiceover in games has become like such a big part of my life and my career. And we all know how hard straight acting is or what do we call it on screen acting or theater yeah, yeah. or whatever it is and this world it was sort of like a niche world for me like a side job in a way because you know because I rarely did it became this massive thing in my life that I'm so grateful for because I mean I met amazing people you included and yeah it's just really changed my life and my career and my everything well, like there's a certain, see, I have always been quite bullshy, actually, and maybe, because it's interesting to hear you say that, because yes, the attitude here is, like, m not make yourself small, but just, like, know your place. Mm. Don't, don't maybe push yourself out too much because, oh, that's that's messy yeah. and that's too big. And I, I feel like, I don't know, it's almost like there's an, it's an embarrassment. I don't know, I can't even describe, I don't even have adjectives yeah. for it, but do you know what I'm saying? You get it because you live here, you know, we, we both 100%, live here. 100%, yeah. And I think we get into the, <clears throat> sorry, into the habit of like also going, if I ask for help from someone who, who sort of, I want to impress career-wise, does that make them think less of me? Or do they then think I'm not a success and does success breed success or is it okay for someone to give you a chance to give you a leg up or do you always have to pretend like everything's going well and well I'll do your project if I feel like it but I don't need your project do you know what I mean like sometimes we get into that we don't admit that things are hard when they're always <laughs> when they always are um just because we want to seem like we're cool and successful and we don't need anyone's help like it's fine it's just like, what we do. What you're saying, and I've done this bef before as well, and my friends do this, a lot of it, a lot of the time when we're thinking about doing something, asking someone, it's projection. We're projecting our 100%. our insecurities and fears. Mm. And I've tried to stop doing that over the years, but I'm hearing that you're, because when you were saying, oh, you know, do they think then that I'm going to be like this or that? They probably are thinking nothing but, yeah, sure, I can help you or I can't yeah. help you. This is one or the other. Yeah. And that is it. And it's so, yeah, yeah, go on. So sorry, no, I was going to, you're saying it's so true. I've got something else to ask you after this, but go on. 
No, but uh, I was just going to say, and um, please segue away as, as much as you want. Um, I, I, I think what I've come to learn as well, doing it, do, well, just doing this for a while, um, this being an actor, um, everyone is essentially like a person doing a job. And so, but, but when we start out, we attribute these like godlike decision making um, attributes or qualities to people who are the decision makers. But essentially, they're just like, they're people who have started the job before we did. And they know more because they're more experienced and they have power because they've got to positions of power. But they're just people doing work. And once you're in, you know, that specific studio, I'm in there now, everyone's my friend. Like I hug people I know about their lives. Like, you know, we have drinks. But back then it was like, oh, I must impress these people who could give job. Like, you know, it's, it's. I don't know why the accent came out. <laughs> um, it's like, was that what you sounded like back in the day, Shy? Maybe that's yeah, maybe, maybe why that's you didn't why get so harder. many parts, you know? Give job, hungry, just give job. Right. Maybe the decision to have this accent helped me. <laughs> Um, but yeah, and, and, and you do like, you know, I've worked with, uh, there's a really, there's a, there's, you know, I've, I've, I've known receptionists that have become huge producers, um, and they were just friends and they happen to now be people who make decisions that also, you know, that also could be good for me, could be, but like, it was never about the work. It was like, oh, you're a person I like. You happen to be in the field that I work. We're friends. And then suddenly you all rise up in this sort of like yes. in, in life and whatever the pile is. And you all suddenly happen to be there. It, and Most people want to help. Yes. And when you rise, when one person rises, we all try and rise together or... I try. I'm. I'm in no position of power ever, but I try and get people booked on comic cons. I mean, that's. I'm like, you gotta, <laughs> like, you gotta book my friends. They're really good. You. Know? So, so nice. that basically, selfishly, so I can go out on Saturday night with a for a drink with everyone. So, I'm like, Saturday 100%. night, so we can go for drinks. But like, I, I do feel that for the most part, human beings want to help other human beings in life generally. Mm. Even though we live in a busy world and we have our own problems. If a human comes to you and says, hey, I need help, like, you're not, you would have to be an absolute sociopath to go, no. Yeah. And I have, I have met a few people having said that, like, just not naming any names, yeah. um, and especially in the last maybe year, weirdly, it's almost like the universe is testing mm. me, that, yeah, have been s sort of steppers, if you know, a step on your head to, um, really? and it's rare, though, when I think, and at the time when it happens, you go, God, that doesn't feel good. But when you think about it, it's like one out of millions, you know, generally. I mean, that's a lot more optimistic than I would ever be. I I, I think people are very difficult. Really? I don't think it's that few. I think there's a lot of people that aren't nice. I've been lucky but... then. I've been quite lucky, I think. Hmm. I've been all right. I think I've been quite I lucky. I do think a lot of people around us, well, maybe, maybe, but what's the chicken and the egg? What, what have we created a group of people around us that are nice that we like to ha hang out with or or are people in our field nice i don't know actually yeah i was thinking about the bubble right so i was talking now this is a little bit beyond what you were talking about but we tend to create bubbles for ourselves as human beings like no matter what you do family friends yeah. job work whatever so and I, I always think that our bubble and our world is, this is this is the way the world is. It's very nice. Everyone's very weird and strange and lovely. And then you step outside yeah. the bubble and you go, oh, no, I'm I'm a weirdo. I'm the weirdo. Like, <laughs> And have you ever, when's the last time you felt, I can pinpoint the last time I felt like that. You tell me the last time you felt like the, the freak in amongst the normies kind oh. of thing. I mean, every time I go to any event that is <clears throat> of people that have normal jobs en masse, like bankers or <laughs> I'm going to this thing actually next week, which is with people. It's it's uh, it's a Jewish holiday thing. And there's a lot of people there that I don't know. And they all have just normal jobs, jobs that most people do. Um, and I just go to I, I just I feel less than in. I don't feel less like it's it's again it's the indecision so in a way I feel really great and proud because I do a job 
that interesting. most people don't do that's cool like that seems like exciting it isn't but it's it hard. <laughs> hard yeah it's hard and it's not glamorous um but so on the one hand i'm proud and i'm like sometimes i feel like a rebel because i i fuck you or i do this for a living and in a way you are but on the other hand oh, say again in a way that you you are a rebel i mean you didn't choose to go the normal way so this is true and i like that but then i do have an inherent sort of schoolyard mentality of like oh uh, they all think less of me they think you know what a joke of a job i don't know i don't know if i answered your question there no but no no you did i get it in, in in those environments where where people don't know anything about what we do mm -hmm. and you have to start explaining or justifying what acting is what games are like oh. yeah I you ever but games are cool because a lot of normal people play games they do so but actually, they look at they go work. oh it's for gamers you know and then you they, they sort of other the other the gamers you know I think I feel like I always I actually am very I'm, I'm as you are very proud of what I do you're proud of what you do obviously but mm. I call them the normies. I'm sorry, normies, but this is the only way I can describe. <laughs> but when you're in amongst the normies, and it can be any sort of normies, you know, um, mm. you just know it when you feel it. And and actually, even people who have maybe normal jobs that just are a bit eccentric can feel they're they are othered from the normies. If you're just eccentric and creative, that's how it is. But Having I, a normal job is a great thing. Hundred percent. Get you can, that confused. No, but on like, top of it, we normies. Need with normal jobs. It's a mindset. <laughs> yes, it's the added exactly, exactly. It's a I mindset. You're going to say something good. And it's like they have it, and then you have to explain your job. And I always feel like a wanker. So then somebody will go, <laughs> "She's interviewed Jeff Goldblum, don't you know?" And I'm like, "Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to be highlighted as." I don't. I don't like to be. I know that I'm in a lime. Uh, I'm in the limelight or on a stage or something. Sometimes. Sure. Sure. But it's I don't like it. I don't like. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't, I'm quite shy. Yes, of course. It's the sense that we have to like justify. <laughs> like if you you have to go so for people to understand or to qualify or quantify your job, you have to say Jeff Goldblum, so that people can connect to it. It's like it's like when actors have to, if if I go oh I've done a thing with George Clooney, like then they go oh you're a real actor. It's like if a doctor says. Oh, uh, I did an operation on a sphincter the other day, <laughs> and you go, "Oh, really? Okay, cool." But then if they go, "Oh, I've done, um, I've done Botox for Kim Kardashian," oh. uh, then it's like, "Oh, wait, that's a stupid example." That's an interesting example. I like how Claire, you pulled that with it. <laughs> I know what I you're saying. It's because that is cool in any way. Doing Botox for Kim Kardashian. But you're trying to. It's cool. like you're pulling out your best. Your greatest hits. Like, yeah, but doctors don't have to quantify no. their doctoring. They don't have to go, I am, have to go, I'm a brain surgeon. Or they don't have to yeah. do that. They can just go, yeah. Like, if I've done a hundred games that people don't know that aren't on, like, a bus, they don't know anything about it. But if I say, oh, you know that game, Final Fantasy, that's on all the buses in London right now? Yeah. I'm in that. They go, oh, wow, cool. And so it's that <laughs> trying to... Yeah. You're, you're tr And then you feel like, I don't know, I just feel like you feel like an animal on parade... And then I feel like there's burning lights on me or something, and I'm like, oh, I don't like it anymore. And I yeah. don't, I don't really. Somebody said to me, "Oh, I'll, I'll, do you just do what you do to you know because you like to be seen?" Or no, what did they say to me? Because you like attention. That's what they said to me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, far from it. Like I really dislike attention, like that yeah. kind of attention. It's like you do your job because it's a form of expression not to sound like a yeah. wanker but it really is a form of expression because of you're course. getting exhilarated and you feel <clears throat> good and shouldn't that be what a job is about not feeling like a shithead at the end of the day just well for money. it should be you know? yeah it should be i mean we all do it for a bit of money as well but um well, of course <laughs> it should be it <laughs> and it's i think oftentimes i mean this is um, this is nothing new ever, but i mean i'm sure a lot of people said it on this podcast as well but like we do this because we're not those people in real life because we don't feel comfortable i'm not gonna sit and talk like this out in the street am i but i would do it in front of this camera in this controlled environment yeah or i will be stupid as a character in whatever in a game or in a show or whatever but i wouldn't 
go into a crowded room and be stupid because I'd be so shy. I don't go to up to people and speak to them just because I fancy speaking to them. But like, I'm speaking to a, a lot of people right now through you. Yeah. We we only kind of ha we have an excuse. We hide behind our job to do those attention seeking things that we wouldn't dare to do in real life. No, I, I feel there's a misconception. It's a within total, the community. within the normie community. I would Can like to do something for a second. Got it. Love it. I yeah. think I feel like we need to bridge the gap between the us and the normie community. We need to like, yeah, we do. I think the normie community needs to come over. And I feel like if uh, arts and creativity and things like that were more revered, generally uh, as we were growing up because i was like an arts kid you know i played guitar i actually d painted mm. and drew um didn't do drama or anything but i was kind of attracted to it but my parents were like no that's not a real job you can never do that so i never really touched it i liked to do all the art and the writing and stuff and mm. i feel like it was yeah i went to my um careers advisor when i was a kid and i said i don't know what i want to study she went what do you like art music and then she went have you thought about law and I was like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And yeah. it's like, you're kind of like funneled through this kind of like, you must become this for society. And I just refused to believe it. Yeah. You know, I was like, no. I... So like, I am. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Go no, on. go on. The Zoom. Isn't Zoom great for human communication? <laughs> How um, did we survive for no, two but... fucking years? Jesus Christ. I mean, yeah, just so quick. Um... I think like there's an element of like, I wouldn't advise anyone become an actor. I think it's a terrible job. But if you really want to be an actor, I think you should be an actor. But I would, I would try, like if I was speaking to kids who were like creative and whatever, I would sort of want to test them on whether they think it's a real job or not. Like whether they think it's it's and it's not about like it's about the work you have to put in like we know how much work let alone disappointment and all of that stuff but like an emotional and mental health stuff but like how much work goes into being an actor being a singer being a dancer you know it, these are really hard jobs and I think sometimes people think they're easy and they just come to you if you can sing or if you can dance or you can do voices. And I think it's sensible to sort of go, when, when I went to the, like an open day in, the, in a drama school that I went to, the principal saw uh, everyone on the first day. This is again, nothing new. I'm not saying anything that's gonna wow anyone. But he essentially said um, to everyone that was just auditioning to be in the drama school, recall um if there is anything in the world that you want to do or that you think you could be good at or that you have thoughts about doing go and do that oh oh only do this if there's nothing else you want to do or can do or you know and i really kind of believe and i think it's also a test it's also a bit of a show to say something like, something like that but i really do believe that that's true i really think you really have to want to do this. Oh yeah, to do it. Like, you gotta want it. Anything I, anything else that I was good at, I would probably prefer to do that. What, but what, I love this job. But what would you genuinely? Uh, like, okay, if it and and we can Okay, so we can't. Choose, so I was. I'm gonna ask you. Genuinely, if you weren't doing this, what would you do now? You can't say musician or some of the because I was thinking I would be a musician. And I was like, no, that's yeah. in the same ballpark. What do you think mm. you could be good at? Go for it. Whoa. Like, what? Because, like, um, think of it. Because, okay, I'll start. I'll, I'll say I've had a yeah, few jobs on. in my life, right? I've come to this one later in my life, and it's this is the one that will stick. I've been a teacher, and uh, I liked it a lot. And I've also been the director yeah. of a company, you know? And I, I did like that. I like because I like being in charge and I like making stuff and I like projects and I like helping people. The students that I taught were mm. wonderful. Uh, I enjoyed my time as a teacher because you really are helping these students and shaping them, you know, and they still follow me on Instagram and DM me sometimes and say hi and they tell me how they're doing. And I love that. 
That's amazing, yeah. So I think I could probably go back to teaching or running some kind of company. I think I'd, I died. What did you teach? I taught uh, social media mark and marketing. Evil. <laughs> <laughs> Evil. Nice. But, you know, it's yeah. quite good to get up in front of a class and say, do you know what? Uh, this is all bullshit. And then you start from there and then you can, like, build it up. Because it is. Yeah. Social media is bullshit. <laughs> like, it's... It's crap. Everything is bullshit. Life is bullshit. But yeah, you're right. It's all pretense. Yeah, don't be fake. Like, if you're a teacher and you're going to teach, then teach from mm. your actual heart. You know, like, I'm, you, I just really felt like, well, I'm talking to 18 to 25-year-olds. If I start going, well, let's talk about hashtags and how important they are. They are important, but, <laughs> like, no, let's just talk about some... I like being a bit more real. And I swore a lot in my class as well. Nice. Um, which I think they didn't mind so much. But one thing I observed was... The young boys were always the most troublesome. Like, they are just really? so full of Why? energy. They think they know best. Yeah. Really enjoyed putting them in their place. Like, that was my <laughs> favorite part. Of course. Oh, God. Of course. I mean, we don't want to get into that sort of social observation of but how boys are brought up and everything. That's I not know. this podcast. No, that's for um, another podcast. Is it a that's... podcast if it's on YouTube? What is it? I don't know. Well, I put it on Spotify as well, so technically it is a podcast. Right, it's a podcast. So Great. now having said that, Shai. Spotify. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what I would be good at. You know, I like I always try and think that and then I can't come up with anything and I'm going like, why would you think of an alternate career? Because that would like, that's a gateway to doing something else. I mean, I have done like for years, I worked as a receptionist as a side job. And I loved it. Did you? And that's so mindless in a way. Oh. In a way, it's mindless. But again, it's one of those things that people think is easy. Whereas actually, it was one of the hardest jobs I've ever done. So for years, I worked as a receptionist in a members club. Um, but I love that. I love like, so I guess I don't have a specific answer. But like the answer is a job that is to do with people. Yes. And interacting with people. But with a certain level of a barrier, a barrier is true. And I guess like that place being a members club means it's not like interacting with just anyone. Like it's not like, I don't know, working in the post office, which are like my hats off to anyone who does that oh, and yeah. faces like the general public every day, people like me who are awful. So like that's a whole different set of skills. But like a like a charming, I think what like what I was good at, if I pat my own back here, which is ridiculous. <laughs> like I th what I think I was good at in that job was like a mix of good cop and bad cop. Like I would be the most charming, like effervescent, like welcoming person until you fucked with me. Oh. And then it'd be like, don't fuck with me. And you know, you know not to fuck with me. Oh. And then it was like this kind of like constant sort of like game of balancing oh like an ebb of flow like, of like yeah, um ebb and flow. of like the light and the dark side yeah yeah bill and ted <laughs> ebb and flow. what's the okay oh, i've got i've got a question bit of a deep question for you then shy oh yeah. so what is the because i can't imagine you being like that like don't fuck with me. Because every time I've seen you, obviously you're just having a drink and it's all fun and yeah. fine. But what is the dark side of shy? Like, like if you're, what is your, what's the underbelly like? It's all fake. It's all fake. The underbelly is hairy and disgusting. <laughs> um, it's all full of udders. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, Interesting. Yeah, There's a cream easy, for that or a to... pill or I'm sure. No, it's surgery and so I'm saving up. Um, <laughs> But it's I, I don't have a dark side so much. It's just it's a it's a show, and it was a show. So in a way, it's a cop out because being a that that job was basically being an actor, but in real life, or like it's it was playing the part of a receptionist or playing the part of a bad cop. I'm just a I like I kind of call shit as I see it, and so like we said before, people in this country sometimes think they can get away with things uh or if they say things a certain way you won't catch on to the the 
maneuvering and this sort of thing. And I'm very perceptive. So I would always see it just specifically because this was a members club. People would constantly lie, constantly try to like blag and, and sort of sneak in or just dealing with drunks or people who have done other substances. You do, you just have to know how to sort of toe that line of like, I am smiling at you, but if you if you push this too far, it's not gonna be good. But like, it's never threatening. It's only a fucking reception somewhere. I feel like this is boring. No, it's not because <laughs> what I've picked up on, which was something you said earlier, yeah. actually, and something we have in common there, was you're working with people, right? And I was working with people too. But there's a there's a barrier there. And I feel mm. that with our jobs now, we are so sociable and working with people, but it's not like I get up on stage or you're doing your thing and you start talking about your life story. There's still a mat. There's like a, there's 100%. a barrier of your characters yeah. that you play or I, I, I like interviewing people cause no one's looking at me, you know, it, they're, they're looking <laughs> yeah. at them. Talk about them. So everyone's yeah. going to be looking at you right now. Right. So like, I'm like, this sure, is... but they want to watch you interview those people because so just... you're fun and they like your perspective. It's... Yeah, hide away. Just do this. But you know what <laughs> I found? Do, quite... do your interviews like just that? Just like this. I should just start doing them like this. Yeah. Or just wear like a bag over my I head. Should... Like just mm, just mm, do that. Mm. But I, you know what you're I found? horrible to look at. Oh, yeah. well, yes. that, I mean, right now, I'm, gl- I mean, I'm sweating. I mean, I should just have wore a bag over my head. My God. I am also sweating. But you, but go you, on. You're also My gorgeous. underbelly is like this. <laughs> <laughs> those others are like oh. I was a yeah. uh, like so I find it interesting doing stand up because all all you have mm. is yourself I did it last night but I like I liked it because I was like but there's still a barrier because you're telling stories but they're not real they're kind of they are real stories yeah yeah but they're like on acid you know they're like but you choose what to show yeah. you know what's really exposing singing dancing those mm. are things where like you are really exposed. Mm-hmm. Like those are really hard things to do. Yeah, I can't do. I can't. I, I actually kind of like singing, but you're a dancer. I can't. I can't dance. I, I can't. I'm not very coordinated. No, I wish I had the freedom though to just be like to just. I watched the Barbie movie last night. And I thought that looks fun. Like I want to. Wait, 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 wait! Hold on, everyone. Let's just press pause. Right what? Here. You only watched it last night. I've been busy. So I got I got a screener and I watched it last night at home. I just was like, cool. He's got a screener. <laughs> you would be bothered to go to the theater. I'm telling to save you, save cinema. <laughs> Alan is the MVP. It's all about Alan. <laughs> Alan's great. Alan is the MVP, and I really like the Kens. But I thought, you know, I watched them and I was like, I wish I could dance. I want to be able to dance, but I would never. No. I, would, I was the fat the kid dancers, at school. Man. So. Dan- Were you? Yeah. It was bad. But, that, but, but I mean, not to say that, like, you can very much dance. I don't know if that's the excuse to not dance. No, no, no. no. It's not no. going to, no, it's no. the coordination up here. Yeah, but the, how, it's kind of like when you're drunk and you dance, you think, I'm so hot right now. And you're like. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, I am so oh. self-conscious about dancing. I can only do it now at a wedding with, like, really close friends and drunk. Yes, enclosed Otherwise, in a circle of friends dance. so no one else sees you. Just... 100%. And it's not like pretending to dance, not really dancing. But why is that? Because it's exposing. Because dancing is exposing. You're right. Isn't that interesting? It's too exposing. I mean, is it interesting? It's everyone knows it. But yeah, but I can't believe you only watched Barbie last night. What, like, how did you resist it? Like, everyone's talking about it for months and months. I don't it know if okay. this airs, but by that time, we might all be dead. It was okay. But, yeah. Six or seven out of ten. Well, because, of course, you've had so much expectation. How could you possibly enjoy it all last night? Oh, because, ev- you know, everyone, I hate hot takes. Everyone online was, <laughs> is like, actually this, actually that. There's, like, essays about it, blah, blah, blah. And I have avoided, I've avoided all of that. And I just watched it last night, but I thought, yeah, you know, Clueless was also a, a great movie of this yeah. sort of ilk in the nineties. I think it's just that every generation needs that sort of movie. It was really, I agree. it was colorful and fun. It was really beautiful. Like it was a beautiful film, and I want to dress like Ken. I was looking at Barbie's outfits, and I was like, yeah, whatever. I, everyone's gonna dress like Ken on Halloween. Like Ken's the one. Here's my hot pod hot take. Okay, I cool. think I agree with you completely, and I think that if 
obviously they can't give interviews now, but if Greta Gerwig was like in an honest chat, I think the movie's great. Like, I think it's everything that people like about it. It's just great it's fun. and fun and good. I don't think she set out to make a film that is essayed and debated and discussed so much. I think she set out to make a film of things that she believes in because it's just who she is. Not to like go, I'm preaching this about women and men. And like, I think she just, that's her worldview. So she went out and said it, thought it'd be funny to say this, funny to do that, funny to cast uh, Michael Sarah's Alan, like all funny. Yeah. And she just went with Noah Baumbach, wouldn't this be a fun film to make? And I think we have taken, this is art, isn't it? That's like art. We have all taken it and made <clears throat> something out of it that maybe is more than they intended to do. It doesn't we see yeah. something in it. It doesn't belong to that, that person anymore when they put it out there. It's like it belongs sure. to the public <clears throat> and it must feel, be a and weird... I think, I th yeah, 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 no, true, exactly. And I think she did mean, well, I mean, not to belittle what she meant, I think she's fucking brilliant. So it's not to say, oh, she didn't know what she was making. I just don't think she set out to make a film that is important. It's like seminal. I think she set out to make a smart, like cheeky, sort of subversive film that is just fun. Yes. And what she believes in, but not a film that like essays are written about. Do you know what I mean? I agree <clears> with you. The other stuff is a bonus. No, I agree with you. And now it makes me want to see it again, actually, and just go, right. Now that now I, I should have just. You should have just said this to me, and then I should have gone in. Because I went in and I was like, right, let's, what, what have you then? Let's go. Mm. But this is it, because if you go and see, well, what is this all about? I then know. you're never going to enjoy it. Ah, no. I need, I'm going to watch it again. I mean, just to get tips from, like, the Kens. I mean, the Kens were all fabulous. <laughs> I was like, oh, my yeah. God. I, I... You should learn about how to sing a song and play a guitar. I can play guitar. Yeah. I could do that. No, I know exactly, but now you know what to sing, and I could totally do that if I could see if I could play guitar on the beach, and like young men were into <laughs> that, I would just do that. But like, just like wooing young yeah. men on the beach, that's I've got big Ken energy. I think <laughs> big Ken, you really Ken do. energy, <gasps> Ken energy. Yes. Can big. you feel? <laughs> yeah. I love it so much. Um... Um, Shy, <laughs> you... Have you watched Oppenheimer? Oh, sorry, no, yeah, no, question, please. No, 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 I've not watched Oppen Oppenheimer yet because I, I, I'm enjoying life and... <laughs> <laughs> wow. And I don't uh, wish to not enjoy it. Um, but I will watch it at Fair. some point. I'm so terrible with no, films at the moment. I'm so terrible, like... I think it's too late for you. If you haven't watched it in the cinema, just don't Really? Bother. Oh no, is it dead to me now? Okay. You're dead to it. Yeah, okay. Okay. I feel like I've missed a lot it, this it year. It doesn't need you. That's true. You know, I'm no, sure Open Fiber's got that. a lot of fans. It doesn't need it doesn't need this dickhead mm -hmm. trying to like analyze it. <laughs> yeah. Um No, exactly. Uh Shai, yeah. you have been fabulous. And I'll tell you this, right? Because for those who don't know, if you don't mind me saying Shai, before you started this podcast, you're rather nervous. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm not ca trying to call you out because some people do get a bit nervous before interviews but I wanted to ask you now that we've reached kind of like the end how do you feel about it? Yeah. I feel like you're stupid to end it now I'm a <laughs> fucking gift to this podcast <laughs> what are you doing? I want you to rate the level of no jokes um, I, uh, great like but I sort of did secretly know that it would be great because you're great and we get on and we have these chats when we meet yeah. up anyway so it's that but like we it's just what we said earlier i don't like <clears throat> the the cancer thing of being private i don't like being me out to the world i just like to hide behind work and jokes and things so i'm always worried about that but i feel like we've hit the right balance there well i think you've been the and best version really of yourself for it. this podcast Wow, oh, I really thought you were going to say I think you were the best one I've ever had in this on the. This and podcast. you've been the best ever guest. You didn't let me finish. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you for the penultimate episode. I am very flattered. I'm glad you're in the penultimate flattered. episode because it's like it's been a year of meeting lovely, amazing people. A year and a half or so, mm. and what a strange year it's been. So this podcast is all about changes and decisions, and it's so it, great. It's led me to speaking to lovely folks like you and getting to know you, you know, so it's been lovely. Yeah. Thank you. I love it. I love it because you, because obviously 
well, I know you and leading up to this, like watching a few of these, it's just such a great way to talk about just life and just personality rather than hiding behind selling something or, or talking about jobs and this yeah, human conversation right. isn't so shy tell me i was that <laughs> job that you did <laughs> like what's whoa. your favorite part about playing ken yeah <laughs> it's like oh okay which i did Sorry, did you <laughs> did you didn't you notice oh I was shy ken shy oh you're shy ken oh. like <laughs> i love it I love it. Um, Ken, uh, Ken, I mean, shy. Whoa, Freudian slip. <laughs> yes. yes. It worked. Yeah. It worked. I and people notice Alf. Please look at Alf. Him. For those who are yeah. listening on Spotify, you're probably going, what the hell's going oh, on? Oh, yeah. Spotify uh, people uh, were looking at a plant hugging Alf. It looks like that he's kind of hiding under the plant. He is. I, I love he's Alf. He's recharging. I love it. And what's that picture in the background, that framed that. picture? Oh my god yeah so that comes from my parents house and i just liked it the black so and white I've... one oh wait the framed one's there sorry i thought you meant the red one the red so one's no, the cool black and white one is just <laughs> this is classic me and this is all we're circling back to indecision okay so i literally place a planet of the apes um holder picture there so we've got planet of the apes actor behind the scene okay i was like i'll place that there before i decide what to actually put in that frame and i just kept it and you know what never change one decision it. too many no no never change it no, no never no. change it because i thought it was yeah. someone from the Bee Gees from this, from this far away position i was like Is it's it? great <laughs> i mean i'd stand up to get it but i'm not wearing any underwear oh shit okay well, well, i'll it. I'll I'll press po I'll press stop and then you can stand up. <laughs> yeah, just blur 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 blur. Okay, you guys. Um, Claire, thank you. This was really fun. Thank you so much. I'm glad, guys. For those listening along, I'll put all of um, Shai's details in the description of the YouTube um, little comment thingy box. Um, please leave a comment. Let us know what you think. Subscribe and all that. Um, this has been Hot Pod Time Machine. I've been Claire. This has been Shy. Thank you very much for listening. Take care. Bye. <laughs>